He's getting older. You gotta be raping me! Oh, hit the full button! But not wiser. King of the world, baby! King of the world! This is The Lefty Show. Welcome, everybody, to The Lefty Show. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with all of you today. Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. The 17th of November in the year of our Spaghetti Monster 2014. Welcome one, welcome all to The Lefty Show, episode number 112. Hope to put on a great show for you today. I thank you all for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can find the show. In its YouTube formation, you can also find gaming content and vlogs there as well. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX YouTube's number one source, your number one source, for 1080p, 60 frames per second gaming content. Thank you to everybody else for, or everybody, not everybody else, like, oh, you go watch YouTube, and then you other people follow me on Twitter. No, everybody follow me on Twitter, at Lefty643 is where you can do that. Thank you to everybody that uh, has been donating. Help out the cause. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions is where you can do that. That's I'm raising.com forward slash 643 Productions. And thank you to everybody that's been sharing the show with friends, family, and co-workers. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts for your PC, tablet, or mobile device. Just search The Lefty Show. Be sure to subscribe and download all the episodes at your leisure, and you can help the show grow sharing it with friends and family. I thank you for doing that. Now, people of the world, people of the world... We got to have a talk, all right? We got to have ourselves, we got to have ourselves a talk. Over the weekend, and indeed a little bit before that, it was made public again that there are rape allegations swirling around a much renowned comedian and, uh, I guess I guess you could say thinker of our time, Bill Cosby, big representative of the black community, although I don't know how many um, younger people in the black community identify with a 77-year-old man who uh, more often than not takes issue with some of the more popular culture elements uh, of, quote, urban. Is that? I don't, I don't even know. I don't know how many people still identify with him, but Bill Cosby, there are rape allegations surrounding him. Have been since the 70s when Cosby was big, putting out records. Yes, those used to be a thing, records. Putting out comedy records and the like, and then the Cosby Show. We all know him for the Cosby Show. I know him because of the Cosby Show. Wasn't particularly a big fan of it at the time. Uh, and, and, and before you before you get into it, before you go down that road, It's not because everybody on the show or the main characters on the show were black. That's not it. I felt the show got a little bit too preachy. I always knew that Cliff Huxtable was going to win the day and have a heart to heart with his family and teach them something. I always knew that was going to happen. It was a little bit too feel goody for me. Just for my own personal tastes. I don't know any, any, Show in the 90s that wasn't really feel goody. Yep, Seinfeld ended on a down note. They were all arrested. Cliff Huxtable and the like, yeah. Like, I know Cliff is going to pontificate and I know he's going to learn his children a thing or two. Good comedy bits in there, good comedy timing and stuff. But overall, in terms of watching it as a show, there's just, it's not that, oh my God, I don't identify with black people. No. Um, it was just a, it felt too preachy. Not even a religious aspect to it. It was just, yeah. And to be honest, I mean, you know, Russell Wilson gets cramped from the Seahawks for not being black enough. What did they say about Cliff Huxtable, who was a doctor? His wife was a lawyer, I believe. And they lived in an upscale neighborhood. Lived in a really nice house. Had a lot of money. What do they say about that? No, yeah, Russell Wilson, not black enough. What do you say about Cliff Huxtable? Hmm? Must have been the white, whitest black man on television at the time. But I don't decry him for that. And these 
I digress. The rape allegations have been swirling for some time. And I've heard about them. I've known about the allegations themselves. And I, and I will refer to them as allegations and not refer to Bill Cosby as a rapist. Throughout this entire thing, I'm going to try to do that. And I urge you to try it as well. Because that's the talk we need to have. For 30 years, Bill Cosby has been alleged, an alleged rapist or committer of sexual assault. Alleged. That's it. No investigation, or even if he was investigated, no indictments, no charges filed, no trials, criminal or civil, no criminal judgments, no guilty pleas, no pleading out, no judgments entered against him, against a, a civil plaintiff, or in the favor of a civil plaintiff. Nothing. Nothing like that has ever happened to Bill Cosby, in the 30 years these allegations have been coming forward from a few different women. But nothing has happened. Nothing. They've gone to the police. They've tried to... There's been nothing happened. No, no, nothing at all. Yet today, people are calling Bill Cosby a rapist. And I understand we're not in a criminal trial. We're not in a criminal proceeding. I get that. I understand. I know. I, I Okay, I got it. I, 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 hit, I hear you there. But there needs to be something said for all of that. There needs to be something said for the fact that Bill Cosby has never been charged, never tried, and never convicted of any crime stemming from these allegations at all, ever. No finder of fact, a jury, whether in a criminal or civil proceeding, has found Bill Cosby guilty of anything regarding these allegations. Nothing. Not at all. It's not like the civil judgment against OJ. Not like the uh, impeding a criminal investigation for Ray Lewis. There was nothing. People went, I went to the cops and they didn't believe me. Well, what, are the, what do you mean by that? Do you mean they investigated and found nothing? And you didn't sue? One person tried to sue and they settled out of court? Which is not an admission of guilt at all. Not an admission of guilt. Paying out a judgment would be different. It was an out-of-court settlement. Completely different. And we'll get to that later in the show. Bill Cosby for all intents and purposes, is not a rapist. Stop referring to him as such. Stop. Because, and here's my, here's my problem with it. I don't know whether Bill Cosby actually raped these women. I don't know. I wasn't there. I have no clue. Neither do you. And these allegations are totally baseless. They are not based in any direct evidence at all. At all. They are fanciful stories told by women painting themselves as victims whether they actually are victims i don't know but that's all you have and that's an and if that's enough if that is enough for to to make you say that bill cosby is a rapist and we got ourselves a problem my friends you are not a rational human you're not a rational human in fact i go so far as to say you're probably pretty dumb if all a woman needs to say, if all a woman needs to say, and, and forget, give me the, spare me this concert crap. Oh, well, this person, and now more people are coming out and uh, alleging the same thing. So what? What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. In the wake of the Jerry Sandusky scandal, there were two guys that alleged being raped by a Syracuse basketball coach right in the thick of it. All these victims were coming forward of Jerry Sandusky, and then these two guys said, oh, hey, by the way, we were also raped as children by the Syracuse basketball coach, men's basketball coach. Well, it turned out to be crap, didn't it? But if you apply that same logic, then, oh, well, they were raped by, by the coach. Oh, my God. But no, people were skeptical. Oh, are you sure? Let's Oh, no, it's crap. So don't, don't pretend 
that other people coming out of the word work is proof of anything other than these other people have other their own their own stories. You are basing your your statement of Bill Cosby is a rapist. You have you as a person have thought about it. You have reviewed what evidence is available, and you have come to the conclusion that Bill Cosby is a rapist based on nothing more than fanciful stories. You are an idiot. You are dumb. Get out of my gene pool. Get out of my gene pool. And and you know what? I say this. I say this. Bill Cosby probably raped him. Probably. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Probably committed some kind of weird sexual thing. Now, is it, was it, did he... Did he hold them down and do the, uh, I don't know. Was it more of a, well, you know, you, you, I was really smitten by you. I was taken by you. You're Bill, Bill fricking Cosby, man. And you, you plied me with alcohol and, and then you took me upstairs and we did the nasty and I don't really like that. That's not really, not necessarily, yeah. but Bill Cosby may have, may have well done these things. In the meta sense, if we were able to be attain total consciousness, if we were able to know everything that is to be known, past and present and future, Bill Cosby may well have raped these women or sexually assaulted them. I don't know. Wasn't there. Again, I don't know. But based on where I am, not there, and the only evidence I have. Bill Cosby isn't a rapist. He's not. Should he be charged for his crime? Should he have been charged for his crimes? I don't know. But all we have now are the fanciful stories of these women that prove absolutely nothing. They prove absolutely nothing. There's no tangible evidence at all. There's no witness testimony, corroborating witness testimony. There's no rape kits. There's no police investigations. There's no private investigations. Nothing at all other than these stories. And and the other fact that throughout all these allegations, all of these allegations, all of them, there has been not one single charge filed, not one single grand jury impaneled hearing evidence, not one even deciding, not even somebody deciding not to charge. Nothing. No judgments, no pleas, no verdicts at all stemming from any of these allegations. Now, you take those two together, doesn't that, if you're a rational, right thinking human, doesn't that cast doubt on the allegations? Don't you cast doubt on the allegations first? Say, oh, what? Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby, Cosby raped me. All right, well. Where's your proof? Well, I don't have any. It was 30 years ago. Okay, well, did you go to the police then? Yeah. And what did they do? Well, they didn't charge him with anything. Okay. But I got these other women that say the same thing. Okay, well, did they get him arrested? Did, did he get charged with, with respect to what happened with them? Well, no. Okay, were there any civil judgments? Was he found civilly liable for these allegations, whatever happened? Well, no. Huh. I And maybe it's me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. It's entirely possible. But I look at that set of facts and I say, oh, well, you know, I don't believe you. And I'm not talking to Bill Cosby. I'm talking to the people that are wanting to paint themselves as victims. I don't believe you. I think you're lying right now. I think you are lying. And to me, that's the only reasonable conclusion. Because if you look at the facts as they are, the only facts we have available, the best conclusion you can come to is, I don't know. I don't know. That's all you can come to. That's the only conclusion you have. The, the only conclusion you have is, I don't know. Now, if you are forced to choose a side, how can you not say, well, he's not a rapist? Not, not a rapist at all. Period. Zero. Done. End of story. Until you have evidence, until you produce a rape kit, until you blah, 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 anything at all, Bill Cosby is not a rapist. Yet people make these conclusions. People arrive at these conclusions, and they are able somehow to hold them in their heads and walk around and spout it with other people who go, oh, yeah, well, yeah, he's a rapist. I, what the hell are you doing? Get the hell out of my gene pool, you numbnuts. 
the hell is wrong with you? How can you honestly look at these set of facts and go, oh, Bill Cosby's a rapist? And the woman making these allegations now says, well, for 30 years I've been saying it. Why are people, why didn't people believe me then? Maybe because, I don't know, he was never charged or uh, convicted of anything or found liable or anything having to do with anything with all of this. Maybe that's why. What we need to do, what we need to start doing is being more accepting of being skeptical of, quote, victims. We need to stop, 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 stop with this notion, oh, you have to believe the victims. You have to believe them. You have to believe them. No, you don't. Kiss my ass. No. We have to be skeptical of victims. I was this. I was that. This happened to me. This happened to her. Where's your proof? That's skepticism. That's skepticism. That, uh, that's a good starting point. Not, okay, I believe you, I believe you, let's investigate. No, this happened to me. This uh, da, 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 da. Where's your proof? What do you got? Well, I don't have any. Okay, well, we'll look for some. Now, now again, don't, don't mistake this as just being completely dismissive. Unless you have proof, ah, get the hell out of here. No, 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 no. But we need to stop with this notion that if somebody is a victim, they are immediately to be treated as gospel. Their word, their version of events is immediately to be treated as gospel. And we need to operate from that, from that position. No, 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 no. Because the result is what you see before you. Bill Cosby, 30 years removed from any of these supposed events, is now labeled a rapist based simply on the evidence-less words of a woman from 30 years ago. That's all. And that's enough to make people, some of them supposedly educated, believe that and just spout blithely, yeah, Bill Cosby's a rapist. What? what? OJ's a piss, but he's not a murderer. OJ is not a murderer. He is not. And to call him a murderer is uh, wrong. Jameis Winston, not a rapist. Not. He's a petty thief and also a penis. But he's not a rapist. We need to stop. with just, uh, it, And I don't know why. Again, it, it gets back to this truth, this outcome, this set of facts, this scenario makes me uncomfortable. Let's remove the discomfort because I shouldn't be uncomforted by this set of facts, these thoughts, this anything. I should not be, I should be free from discomfort. So let's change all these, these, these things. It's uncomfortable to think that somebody would lie about Bill Cosby being a rapist. So, uh, we got to believe him. Can't be skeptical of victims. Can't be skeptical of them. Yes, yes, we have to be. Otherwise, and here's the thing, otherwise... Do away with the justice system. Do away with it completely. Get rid of it. Scrap it. That's it. New one. Let's go. New one based solely on allegations. And the number of retweets on Twitter and upvotes on Reddit and likes on Facebook. That's our new justice system. If that's what you want. If you want a system in which we wholeheartedly believe every person that paints themselves as a victim, let's remove everything. Scrap it all. Redo it. No more, no more rules of evidence, no more discovery, no more innocent until proven guilty, no more bail, no more any of that. And you know what? You know what the scary part is? It's already happening. It's already happening. I mentioned in their discovery. Discovery, for those of you who don't know, that don't know, is the phase of... A judicial proceeding, criminal or civil, in which the defense has the opportunity to review evidence that will be presented at trial and has the opportunity to question witnesses, interview witnesses, review evidence, et cetera, et cetera, all the things, conduct their own investigation. And they are supposed to be given access to everything that the prosecution 
may put on at trial. List of witnesses, list of evidence, all the things. And if they are, if the prosecution, whether it's the the DA or somebody in the civil proceeding, if they try to introduce evidence that was not presented to the defense before the trial, we got yourself a problem, my friend, because you can't do that. Our justice system is is slanted in such a way as to give the defendant every benefit of the doubt possible to prevent them from malicious prosecution of all kinds and arbitrary and capricious prosecution of all kinds. In California, there was a law. It's one of those, somebody got, there's some set of hyenas, hyenas crimes. There was some set of hyenas facts in which this person got killed or murdered or otherwise maimed. And as a result of that one time, or the few times that it ever happens, there was a law passed that completely changed the way the judicial process works in that state. It's in California, I believe. And it's some, it's, you know, Murphy's Law or whatever, right? It's like, oh, this person who was, you know, sorry, you lost. They get, they get their name attached to a law that completely screws the rights of everybody. In a domestic violence case in the state of California, You're accused of domestic violence in the state of California. The victim, if they are are to appear as a witness for the prosecution, they can refuse, refuse to be interviewed by the defendant in the discovery phase of trial or in the pretrial discovery phase. They can refuse... to be interviewed, to be deposed by the defendant. And that's law that's codified. And we say, yay, yay, yay. Think about what you did, you morons. Think about what you just did. Think about it. Oh, it's great. Oh, yay, yay, yay. Domestic violence. Oh, it's harder now. It's... Think of what you what you're clapping for. Think about what you're like. You're sitting back on your on your hind flippers, like seal. You are applauding a defendant of a criminal on the on the wrong end of a criminal proceeding. You are applauding that person's right to defend themselves being constricted. You are applauding their ability to defend themselves being reduced. You're applauding. Yay! You are happy. That somebody accused of a crime, it is now harder for them to mount a defense. You're happy for that. That's why we need to stop this crap. We need to stop the notion that if you are a victim, you are immediately true and everything's right and and screw the guy accused of it. We got to go get them and get them and get them good because, oh my God, the victim, because, oh my God, if you don't believe the victim, well, they're not really, they're not going to be more willing to come forward. Well, then what does that say about them? That's not my fault. That's not my problem. We need to be skeptical of victims. This happened to me. Where's your proof? Do you have any? Do you have, and do you have a reasonable set of allegations that would make us likely to believe you and we will go investigate on your behalf? Do you have any of that? That's good, healthy skepticism. Skepticism is not bad. It's not bad of victims. But, oh, well, this woman alleges she was raped by Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby's a rapist. You bunch of morons. Get the hell out of my gene pool. Speaking of morons, I need to get the hell out of my gene pool. Ferguson, Missouri is back in the news. Apparently, sources close to the grand jury investigation have been um, have been saying that the, the grand jury impaneled to discover whether Officer Darren Wilson was in reasonable fear of his life and acting within police protocol when he used lethal force to shoot and kill Mike Brown this summer. And the grand jury is supposed to release their the decision of, uh, of whether to indict the officer on, uh, on charges of any kind. The city of Missouri, <clears throat> excuse me, the city of Ferguson, Missouri, is bracing itself for the riots 
that they believe are likely to ensue if and when the grand jury decides to not charge Officer Darren Wilson with any crime. The people are bracing themselves for a grand jury. I don't know if they're classified as a finder of fact. I don't think they are. They don't prove guilt or innocence. They just decide whether they just decide the the mechanism that is the charging instrument. That's all they decide. They decide whether there is enough evidence to charge, whether the state has a beef. Hey, what's your beef? Whether the state has a beef with some particular guy that they believe might be guilty of something. And, you know, I have to say this. If you wanted to go out and riot, I was with the rioters. I was with them this summer. Go out and get them. Go out and get those. Uh, go out and get police. Using tear gas on peaceful protesters. The officer that pointed a loaded AR-15 at a peaceful protester who was holding up nothing more than a cell phone po- pointed a loaded AR-15 at a kid's face. Go out and riot. Riot against the police state. Riot against police militarization. Yes. Totally with you. Yes, 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 yes. And this summer, indeed, the protests and small riots in Ferguson, Missouri, were about, were a little bit bigger than Mike Brown. They were a little bit bigger than that. It became more about police use of force. Not as it pertains to Mike Brown, but as it pertains to people protesting about Mike Brown. It became about police militarization when Ferguson police officers deployed in their MRAPs with sniper support. Snipers! Like they were walking downtown Baghdad, going, going to roust some jihadists. It became very much about that. And less so about Mike Brown. But let me tell you, if you're one of those people that are going to go out and riot because a grand jury decision does not swing your way, get out of my gene pool. I hope a bus finds you. I hope I hope the working end of a 50-ton bus, or however much they weigh, a city bus, I hope it finds you. I hope the grill finds your skull. Because... Like with Bill Cosby, like with Jameis Winston, we have a process set in place. And at some point, you have to respect the judicial process. We have a process by which we do things, by which we review evidence, by which we review allegations, and then we search for evidence. And then, if there's enough, we charge somebody with a crime. Then that person gets a trial. Then that person is also entitled to a spirited defense. Not in the state of California, because they're going to handcuff you if it's domestic violence. Because, yay! Then that person is tried. They get to put on their defense. And the complainant puts on their prosecution, puts on their case, in front of a jury, in front of a jury of the defendant's peers. That's our process. Not like Mark Tressman all of a sudden. Mar- Mar- that's our process. It's a process. It's a, yeah, it's a process. It is entirely possible, indeed plausible, that the grand jury in Ferguson, Missouri, does not see enough evidence to charge Officer Darren Wilson with a crime. It's entirely possible and plausible, and it's not wrong. It's not wrong. It's not indicative of a failure of the judicial process. It's not indicative of of systemic racism or anything like that. This jury, this grand jury has been impaneled for months hearing only, only Mike Brown testimony and evidence. And for what it's worth, the prosecutor has come out and said that he is presenting everything because, and I learned this later, the pro- a grand jury is kind of the the lapdog of a prosecutor. If a prosecutor wants or not, does not want an indictment, it is theoretically pretty easy for that to happen. 
it is pretty easy for a prosecutor to make to kind of massage an outcome out of a grand jury just like the way an NBA referee if say he was being paid money a lot of money to make an NBA game come out a certain way he can massage a certain outcome if he wants and that's possible yes 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 it is but the DA has said the prosecutor has said well I'm presenting everything here I'm I'm giving him on it all now you can take him at his word or you may not if you don't I have this for you the federal investigation headed by attorney uh, former attorney general Eric Holder I don't know if he's I, I don't know who's heading it now but initiated by attorney general Eric Holder at the behest of president Obama the federal investigation as to whether officer Darren Wilson violated the civil rights of Mike Brown has lost steam and sources close to the federal investigation say that they are unlikely to indict officer Darren Wilson for any civil rights charges any civil rights violations so you may say that oh well the local prosecutor is just a yokel good old boy who's going to protect his police his his little buddy police officers and not indict him with a crime so that's a that's a failure of justice and da, da, da. and I would agree with you that would be a failure of justice however our barometer our litmus test for that is the federal investigation because the feds don't care about Darren Wilson the feds don't care about the DA the feds don't care about the yokel good old white boys in Ferguson Missouri that run that police station and run that prosecutor's office and all that crap they don't care in fact they are there at the behest of liberal President Barack Obama they are there representing a federal judicial arm that has become known for prosecuting civil rights violations that's their ballywick they're like oh civil rights violations oh yeah let's go get some people and even they say oh, we don't see much evidence we don't see anything they don't have a dog in this fight so to speak in fact if they have any dog in the fight it's to appeal to the liberal community that believes so wholeheartedly that Darren Wilson did something wrong, just charge him with a crime and put him on trial. That's their, if there's any dog in the fight, that's it. And even then they say, well, I don't see much. Oh no. So I have to, those, those facts taken in concert lead me to believe that there's not much weight to the allegation that the prosecutor in this case is not presenting all of the evidence that would uh, perhaps cast doubt on Officer Darren Wilson's version of events. I don't, I don't think that's happening. You'd have to try really, really, really hard to screw that up. So if you are, if you are honestly going to look at this process, the grand jury, given everything, given everything because again if they weren't given everything if there was indeed evidence that wasn't exculpatory of darren wilson don't you think the federal government would have found it don't you think the federal government sent down after this all blew up sent down after this all blew up it's not like they were investigating it beforehand like oh well you yeah, know uh. they were sent down there after everybody said look at all this look violation of civil rights look at this look at this they sent down looking for it they had a mandate look for civil rights violations we're looking to get you and they didn't find anything so you have to believe on some level that the grand jury is seeing most if not all of the evidence available hearing testimony from darren wilson and the eyewitnesses and if they return a decision to not indict darren wilson that's justice that's justice and to riot just because the justice system did not return a result that you wanted puts you on the bus list puts you on the bus list and i don't care how many people have to go on the bus list i don't care line them all up send that thing speeding right down the main thoroughfare just line them all up there you go get out of my gene pool if that's your response oh my 
God, the justice system didn't do what I wanted to do, so riots. You know, and circling back to Bill Cosby, somebody actually made the argument. Somebody actually made the argument that, and this is how bad the, the, I don't like this, I don't like the way this came out, so let me short circuit the the judicial process. Somebody said that we need to start repealing statutes of limitations. Because for many of the criminal uh, the criminal charges, whatever there were to be had against Bill Cosby stemming from these alleg- al- allegations, the statute of limitations have expired. Or maybe they come into play. I, I forget how they work. That means that from a criminal standpoint, the state doesn't have, they got nothing. We can't go after them. Statute of limitations has expired. And somebody said, wow, this just is proof positive that you need to get rid of those. Based on nothing more, nothing more than a woman saying, oh, yeah, 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 you raped me 30 years ago. 30 years ago. And I can recall with perfect clarity what happened 30 years ago. If you have 30 years of, crap, screw it. If you have 10 years of memory, if you have 10 years of memory, think of something that happened 10 years ago and recount it step by step and don't miss a beat. Don't miss a fact. Now multiply that by three. 30 years ago, I remember it vividly. Oh, okay. All right. And we need to get rid of, we need to get rid of the statute of limitations. Do you realize, again, imagine, imagine California, no statute of limitations and, and the witness can refuse, refuse to be deposed during the discovery phase by the defendant. Think about that. I don't like this, so let's remove one of the huge protection everybody enjoys against prosecution. Because here, let me ask you this. Let's say, let's say Bill Cosby is innocent. In the 70s, whenever this happened, right? Let's say Bill Cosby is innocent. Or let's say, let's let's keep it about Ferguson, too. Let's say Darren Wilson is evident, is, is innocent. And there's exculpatory evidence for whatever reason, in the hands of people that want Darren Wilson convicted of a crime. And they're holding on to evidence that they realize, holy crap, this this, this clears Darren Wilson. With no statute of limitations. Now, this is murder now. You're talking murder. With no statute of limitations, and there is no statute, statute of limitations on murder. I guess it would be a different crime for Wilson. With no statute of limitations, those people, what do they do? They just wait. They wait. And the chain of evidence gets broken with respect to the exculpatory video, let's say. Let's let's say it's video and eyewitness testimony. Eyewitness testimony paired with video that completely clears Officer Darren Wilson. Well, they wait. They break the chain of evidence. Eventually, it just happens. The chain of evidence gets broken with the video. It's not able to be... Darren Wilson can't introduce that as evidence at his trial as a defense. Okay. Taking care of that. And then you wait 20 years. The victim or the witness, let's say he was 60 years old. You wait 20 years. He's dead now. Oh, well, no statute of limitations. 20 years later, let's go after Darren Wilson for the murder of Mike Brown. Does that sound? Where's justice there? Is justice served? Would justice in any way be served by that? at all and yet there are people that will argue that oh yeah well that sounds good that's a good idea i like it morons everywhere and i don't know why i'm surrounded by stupid people maybe it's me maybe i'm but it seems like a lot of people are really dumb there are people that will honestly tell you because i know somebody's probably typed it already or thought it well bill cosby paid a settlement out to somebody who wanted to sue him in civil court for these allegations That's not an admission of guilt at all, at all. In no way can that be viewed as an admission of guilt or liability. No way. No way. Well, if he was innocent, why would he pay the money? Why would he pay the money? Get out of here with that. If you had nothing to hide from the truth, you would answer these questions. Because now it's gotten to the point where Bill Cosby doesn't say, get the crap out of here. I don't want to talk about that. I got nothing to say. 
Nothing. Oh, well, you see, he didn't, he refuses to talk about it. He refuses to talk about it. He refuses to, yeah, of course he does. Get that crap out of here. Leave me alone. Well, why don't you say it didn't happen? Because I don't want to. Because I don't need to. Kiss my ass. Well, he he settled out of court. He settled out of court. Settled, settled, settled. What does that mean? What does that mean? People will say, oh, well, it means that he was, it, it, it cast doubt on his, on his assertion that it didn't happen. How? Well, because if he, if he didn't want, if he w- wasn't afraid of what his victim had to say, he would fight it and prove his innocence, innocence in court. Prove his innocence. Number one, it was a civil proceeding, so no, he wouldn't prove his, his innocence. He would just prove, it would just prove, a judgment in his favor as a defendant would just prove that he wasn't liable. Not that he didn't do it. That's what you that's why you have a the, the higher uh you have the higher burden of proof in a criminal proceeding than you do civil. First of all, it wouldn't prove anything about his innocence. And second of all, what if he what if he's got a team of lawyers ready to go to work for him to prove his innocence? And they say, All right, well, we've done the projections. And we want a $500,000 retainer, Mr. Cosby. We want $500,000 right now to defend you from these allegations. But, Mr. Cosby, we've been in contact with your the, the, the woman making these allegations and her attorney. And they've made it known to us that were you to pay her a one-time payment of $100,000, she will release any claim and liability against you for anything. So now you're Bill Cosby. And you say, hmm, either I pay $500,000 to tell the world that I'm not liable for something, or I pay a hundred grand plus whatever juice my attorneys want for even bringing me the message, or I pay a hundred grand and this all goes away. Would you, why would you, why would you continue to litigate that? Why would you at all litigate that? Oh, well, to prove your innocence, get out of here. You do it too. Here's why. Here's how you do it. All right? Listen up. Listen up. Let's say you're a senator. Okay? Washington, D.C. We got the big time. And you go to the, is there four seasons in D.C.? You go to a big time hotel in D.C. Nightlife. You're out, you know, catting around, doing whatever it is. You get yourself a little lady friend. Now, you're married. Your wife's at home. You've you've run on a family friendly platform. You got yourself a lady friend. Let's say her promiscuity is negotiable. You go to a nice hotel room. You take your car. You pick her up. You go to the hotel. What do you do? You don't park and get out and go. You go valet, right? Give the valet your keys. The valet goes and takes it through the city streets downtown D.C. to you know park it and put it in their lot and they'll bring it back to you. Then you go upstairs and you do the stumping and you stump and you stump and you stump. You know, you're doing, you you know, doing nose candy, whatever it is. All the great things that senators get to do in downtown Washington, D.C. You're doing all that stuff. It's nice. It's, it's fun. You know, it's quiet. It's, it's, there's just, everybody involved is, is discretionary. It's, it's really, it's really a great time. Well, you get your car, you go home the next morning. A couple weeks later, you're served with a summons. Somebody is suing you. You, personally, the senator, Senator Dickweed, because they are suing you because they think you were the driver of a hit and run. The valet, you you know, you got your nice Mercedes. The valet dinks somebody's fender and drove off because, well, he's not going to report it because he's going to lose his job. Eh, you won't notice they're, they were drunk and uh, it's, it's all good. It's good. Well, somebody witnessed it, reported it, hit and run. Now you're served with a you're, you're served with a summons. You're served with the papers. And the person who who got hit says, "Well, you were the driver, and I'm coming after you now, Senator Dickweed." And you go, "Hey, buddy, what? Uh, it wasn't me." And they go, "Prove it." Well, how do you prove it? And you say, "Well, I wasn't there. I wasn't driving the car." It's the valet. It's the val. It should be the hotel's insurance that pays, not mine, not me personally. How do you prove you weren't there? Well, I was somewhere else. Okay, prove that. How do you prove 
that you were somewhere else while at the same time not proving that you were drunk in a hotel room with a hooker doing blow as a senator of the United States of America. Don't you cut a check to the hit and run? Oh, yeah, here, go away. Why well, would, if I was innocent of a crime, I would, or if I was innocent of any allegations, I would fight them to the death. I would prove my innocence. Well, you were innocent of the hit and run, Senator. Innocent, totally innocent. You didn't do anything wrong. You did not hit that car. Or let's say you ran into somebody. Ooh, make it juicy. Broken leg, broken back, whatever. You were completely innocent of that. You didn't do anything wrong. Why don't you prove your innocence? Why not? Well, uh, he's not guilty. The senator who cuts a check is not guilty of that allegation, is not liable, is not really liable. But they make it go away. Here, settle out of court. Go away from me. They didn't admit anything. They're certainly not admitting liability because they weren't liable at all. Period. Zero. Not guilty. But they do it anyway. Why? Because one, putting on the defense would be costly. And or two, there are other things that would have to be admitted in the course of mounting the defense that they don't want to talk about. Is there, any, is there anything wrong with that? Have you, are you, does that mean you're guilty of, of this crime or of this allegation? Does that mean you're liable? Does that mean anything? No, it does not. Just because Bill Cosby settled out of court with somebody who was making outrageous allegations against him proves absolutely nothing. But, oh, Bill Cosby's a rapist. And I can hold these thoughts in my head, and it all makes sense. People really need to get the hell out of my gene pool. It's pathetic. In the sense, Bill Cosby may have raped them. But I don't have that evidence, and neither do you. Neither do you. You weren't there, and the allegations now present no evidence that corroborates the story. None, zero, period, end of story. Stop calling Bill Cosby a rapist. Stop calling Jameis Winston or Jameis Winston a rapist. They're not. In fact, Jameis Winston was investigated. No charges filed. No charges have been filed against any of them. No trials. No indictments. No pleas, no guilty pleas, no nothing. We need to stop, stop circumventing our justice system because we want this outcome. People want Bill Cosby to be a rapist. People want Officer Darren Wilson to be guilty of murder. We need to start seriously preparing ourselves for the reality that they're not. Let's bring it home. Woo! Another great episode of The Lefty Show. I had a great time putting on the show for you. I hope you had a great time listening. Thank you to everybody for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can find the show in its YouTube formation. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Lefty643. Thank you to everybody that's been helping out the show monetarily by donating at I'mRaising.com forward slash 643 Productions is where you can do that. That's I'mRaising.com forward slash 643 Productions. Thank you to everybody that has been sharing the show, helping the show grow by sharing it with friends, family, and co workers you can find the show wherever you get your podcasts for your pc tablet or mobile device android ios it doesn't matter just search the lefty show wherever you get your podcast be sure to subscribe to the feed and download all the episodes at your leisure anyway guys that's my time i gotta get out of here thank you for joining i hope you enjoyed i'll catch you next time i'm out bye King of the world, baby, king of the world.